How you doing, man? Good to see you. Good to see you, Coach. How are you, buddy? I'm great. Good. Hey, uh, let's talk last year real quick. Um, great season, just so close to making the playoffs. Yeah. I know in the in the steps of this program, that was a huge step to yeah. even almost make the playoffs, but I know you also have to, had to have been pretty frustrated. Sure. I mean, you know, for two years now, you know, when you first take the job, we, we thought we were going to be pretty good in 2016 because we knew we had a veteran quarterback coming back. And, you know, but a lot of it was with the new head coach, you know, feeling each other out and seeing what we were going to be, how I was going to function differently from the guys that have been there in years past. And, you know, we went out and we played loose and we won some close games and we had a hell of a year at 9-2. and two. Unfortunately, you know, uh, Fairmont and Shepard, you know, were 10 and 1 and, and 10 and 0 that year, 11 and 0 that year, and, and things didn't work out. You know, again, we go into Malik's senior year last year, we, we knew, we thought we were going to have a really strong outfit again. And, uh, you know, for us, it was uh, where can we get better in those small margins within the game? You know, the special teams, the hidden yardage, uh, you know, a few plays here or there that may sway it. And, uh, you know, I went ahead and scheduled University of Indianapolis, which ended up presenting a unique opportunity. We, you know, we opened the season against a, a top five opponent in Shepard, who ended up going undefeated, and we finished the season against an undefeated U Indy team. But for me, I took the chance on that with those guys because. You know, as we try to build this program to a consistent winner, if you want to be a playoff team, I think that you have to stress your kids in the sense that you need to go on the road, you need to play uncommon opponents or unfamiliar opponents on on, on their territory and, and challenge your guys. And that's what we did. So, you know, obviously, unless you win the last game in the in December, you're always a little disappointed. But um, for us, I thought we still continue to make strides, and I'm excited to see the next step this year with a lot of young kids involved. Replacing Malik Grove, impossible, obviously, yeah. in one year. Uh, but I'm just, from a stylistic standpoint, I mean, he, he was a kid that could beat you with his feet, could beat you with his arm, he beat you with his mind, I mean, his brain. He mm -hmm. was, you know, had a very high football IQ. When you, in your mind, when you thought about replacing him down the road, you know, down the road, which I'm sure you did probably, you know, a couple of years prior, is it a kid you want in the mold of him? Would you ever be open to having just a drop back pocket passer? Or do you think that your offense is, is pretty well built around a guy that's got some mobility? You know, I, I think the things that we do, um, I like to have a guy that can do a little bit of both, you know, and, uh, it's funny because in 2005 I was I was at the university uh, uh, or as a Purdue University and you know we, we thought for certain that a kid named Brandon Kears was going to be our quarterback and he was an athletic guy and it, it just didn't work out about four games in it, a change was necessary and we bring in Curtis Painter and he was a drop back guy but we had evolved into into an Urban Meyer type offense even at Purdue from a running standpoint with option and things like that and you know. Curtis functioned and ran in the system and, you know, pulled it judiciously in terms of uh, on the option game and, and it functioned and it worked. And so for me, I think that, you know, looking to replace a guy like Malik, you, you want to find the best player available and then we'll build what we do offensively around him. We're going to have a strong run game, whether that means the quarterback's overly involved or, you know, we do it with a stable, a uh, really strong stable of running backs. Uh, is yet to be determined, but you know, kind of depend on how this quarterback situation plays out. But we're very confident in the, in the two or three guys that are in that battle right now, and and uh, it's going to be fun to see. I'm, I'm excited to see who out shakes down. Talk about defense. If you look at numbers, you guys gave up some yards last year, yeah. but you were pretty good in the red zone. Didn't give up a lot of points. Teams didn't get a lot of uh, conversion rate. Did that bother you that you were giving up the yards, or is it all about red zone defense? Media? No, I, you know the the way that football's gone with teams getting more plays and running tempo offenses. Uh, I said it a few years ago. I, I still strongly believe that you really have to look at points per possession, and you know would I love to hold everybody to under. 250 yards certainly but that's not going to get it done if you look at just the conference alone you know where we finished in 2014 my first year in the league as an assistant would have been good enough for about third in the conference last year in total defense and so you know uh 
for us, I, I think you look at points per possession, and and really that that's key because at the end of the day, the only thing I care about is winning the football game. And you know, certainly we'd like to hold them down, but um, you know, the points the points are the biggest thing, and the wins wins and losses. So.